Okay, Easter's happened. We've had the celebration of Easter Sunday, and we have focused on the Lord's resurrection. Well, as we're going to tell the world about the Lord's resurrection, we have to be able to say, what difference does that make? Does it matter that the resurrection has taken place? I think it does. For the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at uh, the visitations that Jesus made after his resurrection to various people and to groups. He did that for 40 days until his ascension. And we're looking at the significance of the resurrection of Christ, what difference it makes. You know, the gospel, the word itself, means good news. And that's exactly what proclaiming the gospel is. It's telling news that something has happened that the effect of it carries over into uh, the future, that from that moment on, things are changed forever. So when we talk about the gospel, we're talking about, yes, the birth of Jesus, who Jesus is, but primarily we're talking about the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus, and what difference that makes, and the power that that story has, the power of that reality. And so uh, when we begin to ask questions about the resurrection, we begin to ask, oh, well, isn't that just a made-up story? Isn't that something the church just decided to make up? Isn't that really, it's not really about a bodily resurrection. It's not really about something happening that makes a difference that is a reality for everyone. I would disagree with that. I would say that there is no more important event to study, no more important event to talk about than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because if that is true, if that is true, and I believe that it is, and I believe all the evidence points to the truth of it, then we have, uh, we have a story to tell. And then going back to that, what, what made the church what it is? Why did the church continue? If Jesus is not resurrected and he is just dead on the cross on Good Friday, and there's just an empty tomb on Sunday, but there is no resurrection appearances, then all you have is a story about some guy that was dead and nothing else. And there, there were stories like that. But there is no story other than the story of Jesus Christ where there is a crucified man who is dead. His body is missing, but he appears physically with a glorified body, with a body that's different from our bodies and, and continues to live and ascends into heaven. There is no other story like that. So we are bound and determined to explain that, to, to proclaim it, yes, but how can we proclaim it if we have no understanding of it at the basic sense of what it means ourselves? And so we do have a wonderful story to tell. And I'm excited in the next few Sundays and the next several days as we do devotional uh, material about this, looking at the appearances of Jesus and talking about those appearances and what effect they had on the people and collectively what effect it had on the church as it came to be called. So... As we do that, we're going to be focusing on uh, what difference does it make that Jesus is raised from the dead. And so we're going to be not looking at the reality of the resurrection as much as we're going to be looking at the result of the resurrection. So I'm looking forward to these next several days as we get into devotional material, looking at the appearances of Jesus, the post-resurrection appearances. And um, I hope that you'll come along on this journey with me. I'm excited about that. Uh, excited about where we're going. I think too often we as Christians, we the same with Christmas. We rush to Christmas and then Christmas takes place and then we rush on to some other topic. We rush on to something else uh, to think about. Well, I don't want to rush past Easter. I, I don't want to rush past the resurrection. I want us to spend time looking at what it means and the significance of it and the effect that it has had and continues to have on the world that indeed on our own individual lives and our lives as churches. And I don't think there's any more question that needs to be expounded more in the age in which we live, this age of relativism, this age of skepticism, this age that, um, you know, whatever you believe is fine, I'll write my own meta narrative, my own story, and who are you to have a story that's overarching that uh, it, it covers everybody else's story. Well, that's worth exploring, and I want to do that. Now, now, I don't know that I'm qualified to do it, but I want to do it, and I want to take you on that journey of exploration with me. So I invite you to come along on this journey with me in the next several days as we look at um, the meaning of the resurrection, 
and, and I'm excited about that. So I'll be seeing you every day. Uh, we'll be posting a new uh, devotion every day about the results of the resurrection. What does it mean for you and me? God bless you. I love you. More importantly, Jesus loves you. Gave his life that you might have eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and joy unspeakable right now. I pray that you know the truth of that and you know that in the midst of all of this virus and all of this unknown and all of this question marks, that Jesus is still the King of kings and Lord of lords and he has power over this and power uh, for you to overcome this. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't know what all God is doing, but he's doing something. He has promised to bring good to everything, to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I pray you know that truth. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow.